Most nervous you've ever been playing golf? Playing with Tiger. Oh, when? Uh, right after I won the Wyndham, I got paired with him at uh, Liberty National, first playoff event. Man. Yep, first tee. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And I'm coming off a Did win, you... so I had nothing to lose. And he was talking, he was congratulating me on the win, but I'm standing right there and I had to hit first. And I'm like, I, I, I got to hit this in the fairway or else he, I mean, what's he going to think? <laughs> close to you uh or where we were close to you You, you're from hickory i'm from greensboro we both went to gardner webb university um my brother my brother went to western uh same about the same time you did so we're basically family uh brian shade um brian shade i think he was a couple years maybe a couple years ahead of you he said he said he had a class with you i'm not sure uh he said he he said something about hazing him we didn't want to ask any details so (laughs) Yeah, I can't talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, kidding. But basically, you know, we're family. We're cousins of some sort, I'm sure. So <laughs> Love it. So, uh, Love it. So, Cousin JT, uh, congrats on the win last week at the John Deere. Um, your second win on tour, we were just going to ask, was it, the, was it harder to win the first time or the second time? Man, that's a great question. I've had a few people ask me that. Uh, I feel like it's always hard to get that first one out of the way. But this one felt harder just being wire to wire. The the yeah. deer felt, I mean, when you're sleeping on the lead for that long, it's, I mean, I feel like I did all the, a bunch of media after the rounds and I'm telling everybody, I'm going to try not to think about it, you know, try and, but the reality is you're thinking about that finish line the whole time <laughs> and you're, ju- you're trying to just tell yourself that you're not going to, but you know what's at stake, you know what comes with the win and um, the pressure, so I felt like this one was a little was a little bit tougher just because it was wire to wire. So how when did those demons come in? Because I know I mean you had to battle it the entire time. You had a huge lead after the first round. Like was it? Did it start in the second yeah. round, third round, or when, when did you have to start kind of trying to stay in the moment? Probably after you know after Friday. I mean after Friday I had I had built the lead up a little bit and. Um, knew I was playing well and, and felt like I'd put myself in a position where I was going to be in it on Sunday, no matter what I did, uh, from there. So it, that was probably when I first started having to, having to try and, you know, put those, put those thoughts away. But, um, it's hard because everybody's asking you about it and you're trying not to, not to think about it. But, um, again, you just, it's, it's, you're in first place, you're sleeping on the lead and, and it's hard not to. And then Jake, Oh, and, and then ahead, you Mike. came and you come out and you birdie three on the, yeah. on the final round to go up five. And I'm just, just, just wondering what you're thinking <laughs> at that point. Yeah. I mean, probably not thinking the right things. I'm probably thinking <laughs> that it's over and I'm going to run away with it. And that's why I made a couple of Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's something it was, I wanted to go out there and, and get off to a good start. And I wanted to build that lead going into the back nine and getting off that start was, was great and kind of a little bit unexpected, but um, you know, that was, that was kind of our game plan. And I told Aaron and I, we said, we get a wedge in our hand, we're going to be aggressive, try and make birdies. And when we don't, we're going to hit it in the middle of the greens and be smart. And um the two bogeys I hit in the middle of the green on one of them and, and three putted. And then the other one, I had a wedge in my hand. So we were going at the flag and I, and I didn't hit a good wedge shot, but um, luckily we kind of settled down and, and played well coming in. Hey, JT, you mentioned swing changes in your interview afterwards. Could mm-hmm. just at a high level, could you just tell us a little bit about what changed with your swing? And, and I think more importantly, what convinced you that you needed to make those changes? Yeah. So Going back probably, probably two, I mean, year and a half, 18 months or so, I just gotten into some bad habits of, um, I think we played in a lot of wind kind of at the start of the year in 21, I guess. And uh, maybe two, no, 2020, we played in a lot of wind. And so I got in some bad habits where the club was at the top of my swing. It was shut. It was long. Um, which was leading to me being steep at impact and kind of had a two way miss and it was, it was bad. Um, and it just wasn't consistent. And so working with my coach, we worked on kind of trying to get it a little bit shorter, a little more square, um, with, 
with the face and that just allows me to I like to work the ball both ways uh, when I really feel like I'm hitting it good I can hit fades I can hit draws I can hit you know hard fades hard draws or soft fades ev everything so um I hadn't really felt like I'd been able to do that um and so we needed to make we had to make those changes and it was a it was a work in progress because it's not an easy change, especially when you're still trying to go play tournaments in the middle of it. So there were some times where it was it was tough and I wasn't hitting it good. And, and luckily, the putter kind of bailed me out a little bit. But um, yeah, it was it was tough. Well, and, and you also had the new title as TSR driver in the bag. And I know we're always yeah, we're always curious at at your skill level at a pro skill level. Like, what do you see in the numbers, the data? Like, what are you seeing that, that says, I need to put the bag, I need to put this into my bag immediately? So a lot of times when the new stuff comes out, you know, it's, you know, you know, there's going to be something newer and better about it. So um, it's, you're not usually shocked to see that it, it is a little bit faster. The driver, I had immediately had a little bit more ball speed. So I was carrying it a little bit further, but the small little things that, that we're kind of looking for is what does it look like? How does it sound? How does it feel? Cause that's, that's our immediate feedback. Um, whenever we're on the course. And if you, if you feel good about the way it looks, you feel good about the way it feels, then that's going to give you confidence when you're standing up there and you need like, you know, trying to close out a tournament and you got to hit it in the fairway. Um, so, or you got to reach will par five and you need to hit one down there pretty far to have a chance at a three. So that's kind of our, our, uh, point of view when we're looking at the new stuff is we know it's going to we know it's it's going to be faster we know it's it's probably going to be better but how does it pass how does it you know check the boxes on how it looks how it sounds how it feels and how does that translate to putting in the bag makes sense and then uh you're going to the to the open um at, at st andrews have you ever been there before never been i've been to i've been in edinburgh one time i had a college teammate uh steven smith who's from there he got married there um i was one of i was one of two best men in the wedding and it was a full scottish wedding we did we had to wear the kilts, the kilts and, everything. and everything it was awesome <laughs> yeah it was so fun but that's my only it's the only time i've ever been over there so we played golf one day at the renaissance club where they're having the scottish open this week and so that's that's it that's the only uh Lynx, uh golf i've ever been exposed to so we're going to be learning as we go when we get over there, but um, we're pretty pumped. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. We have uh, we have a, a lightning round that we always ask our our uh, uh, interviewees if, if you're up for that. Yeah, bring it. Let's All do right. it. <clears throat> Most nervous you've ever been playing golf? Playing with Tiger. Oh, when? Uh, right after I won the Wyndham, I got paired with him at uh, Liberty National, first playoff event. Man. Yep. First team. What? I mean, yeah. And I'm coming off a Did win, you... so I had nothing to lose. And he was talking, he was congratulating me on the win, but I'm standing right there and I had to hit first. And I'm like, I, I, I got to hit this in the fairway or else he, I mean, what's he going to think? <laughs> and you made contact. I did. I actually hit that, a good one. Hit, hit it down there in the fairway and made birdie. I actually birdied the first two holes. So oh, I, nice. I was out of the gates, out of the gates hot. Momentum still running pretty good from the win. Oh, so. Couldn't have gone better, but I was pretty nervous. That's awesome. All right, if you get of anyone's golf swing, whose golf swing you take? Oh man, um, Rory McIlroy probably, mm. or Adam okay. Scott. Adam Scott is is the prettiest. Rory's Rory right now is is hitting it, is hitting it unbelievable. <laughs> um, all if right, you could have anybody's pleated pants. Would it, would it still be Adam Scott's, or would you change your answer? <laughs> Do I have other options? Is he the only, <laughs> he's the only one that wears them, right? <laughs> These days. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, favorite drive through biscuit? Bojangles Chicken Biscuit. I'm a North Carolina guy. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you were going to go to Biscuitville. But staying on North Carolina, I give you a plate of plain pulled pork barbecue. And there's a bottle of vinegar sauce and a bottle of ketchup-based barbecue sauce. What are you pouring on there? I'm gonna go probably a little bit of vinegar and and keep it keep it light. I don't I don't like I don't want the heavy the heavy ketchup stuff. Okay, all right, yeah. I like it. And yeah. then last question, we ask every guest this question: six right. feet of water. It's a pool. It's an Olympic sized pool, six feet of water. There's a nine foot polar bear 
facing off with a 15 foot great white shark. Who do you got? The shark. I mean, gosh, what a smart I think, man. I think the great white, I mean, that thing lives in the water. The polar bears in and out. That, that great white's <laughs> going to win that, I think, every time. For our <laughs> listeners, it's this, it's this kind of wisdom that gets you to the top. <laughs> this is what it takes. This is what it this takes. Is a, you gotta have takes. smart. Yeah. This is intelligent man right here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, JT. Well, North Carolina roots. That's right, man. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're right at the end of our time, so we got to let you go. But thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That was fun. Thanks, JT. JT Poston, the postman, the postman. <laughs> JT, quick name your favorite. Postal zip code. <laughs> <laughs> you should actually, that would be a good one. What did I have on there? Uh, what's your favorite mail service? If I said mail something UPS, would you? Or are you going straight? U- US, are you a USPS guy? <laughs> How do you rank feel about f- DHL for international shipments? Rank your favorite zip codes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about zip codes. They're meaningless. <laughs> They're meaningless. <laughs> I throw out a zip code. The word, word in the street is I can throw out any zip code in the country and you can tell me exactly where it is. Is there any truth to that? I can throw out a zip code. You can tell me exactly where the best Cajun chicken place is <laughs> right there. <laughs> we've, we've heard you're a big Cajun chicken guy. <laughs> we just have a whole show of mock questions. That never the postman, uh, listen... We know you've been to every one in America. What's the clean, <laughs> cleanest post office? Quick, I've got a package that weighs nine pounds, six ounces. Well, how much is that going to cost me to ship overnight? <laughs> Give me a price. Or do I need to ask Carl Malone? 